Hi, my name is Tyler Young, a Dell Certified Solutions Architect here at XPy Technology. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to install and run Live Optics in your server environment. Let's get started. I want to preface that I've already downloaded and updated to the latest version of Live Optics. If you haven't done so already, you can download via the link in the description, or you can reach out to your XBite rep for your custom invite link. Once you've downloaded the zip file, you can extract all of the contents and then open up the Live Optics agentless application on either your desktop or your server. Um, and then once you get it opened up, you'll be brought to this screen where you can choose how you're going to be running Live Optics. Now, for the most of the time, you're going to be pointing it at the server level uh, via Optical Prime, and we'll be doing that here in just a second. But before I do, I just want to um, you know, just go over a couple of these options that we see some of our customers utilize as well. So you can see that you can point it at your, you know, AWS, Azure, and Nutanix uh, infrastructure. If you go down here to storage, you can also point it at the storage appliance and get, um, you know, a live optics report based on the storage's perspective versus the host perspective. So this is something we see if we have, you know, customers who want to kind of, you know, get a, a different view on their Unity's performance, maybe their power store, power scale, et cetera. So, you know, if you have one of these storage platforms here, then you can run it against that. Um, regardless, we still recommend if you do point it at a storage platform that you still run it uh, via Optical Prime as well and get it from the host perspective as well, just to kind of, you know, see it from both perspectives. Um, but without further ado, let's click on Optical Prime. Uh, from here, we're going to keep the default setting as establish a secure HTTPS connection to the Live Optics web service. This allows Live Optics to automatically upload your completed Live Optics report to your web portal so that you can analyze the results and store them alongside your other reports. Now, this is useful because you know, a lot of our customers will be running this on, you know, at the very least, you know, a monthly or quarterly basis. So it's just nice to have one place where all of your reports are all, all in once, you know, one place to, to manage and, and look at. So we keep that default. Click next. Um, this is where you're going to name your project. So I just mentioned that, um, you know, you're going to have multiple projects, so it's just helpful to, to name it. By default, it names it on whatever server or host that you are uh, running it on. So I'm just going to name it um, Xbyte uh, January 2024. So that way we know that's when it was ran. I'm going to hit Next. And this is the SIO kit. So what this is is essentially, again, I mentioned that the Live Optics report will automatically generate and communicate with your Live Optics portal. However, if by any chance that it loses communications or, or maybe just doesn't upload properly, um, you'll have a manual file, which is an SIO kit. And what that is, is um, you will manually upload that to your Live Optics portal for it to, uh, you know, de -scram, uh, you know, unscramble all of the, um, you know, the information regarding the performance metrics. So this is just that file that just has all that raw data in it um, that just tells you how your server is performing. So we're just going to save this to my downloads, give it the same name. Click next. And now this is the, the final screen here. So um, this is where we're going to be actually adding the intended host themselves. So um, now I don't have any hosts on this network that I'm on now. So I'm just going to be keeping it simple and adding a local system, which will just essentially run uh, Live Optics against, um, you know, whatever system I'm currently have this Live Optics, um, you know, executable uh, downloaded on. So you can see that uh, it sees it as a physical server. Uh, it names it of whatever name I have it, tells me the OS that's running on it, and it even gives me a list of the you know local disks that I have on it as well. Um, if you wanted to add additional servers, you would click Add Remote Server here, and this is where you would either point it directly at a Windows Server or a Hyper-V node, um, which you would click that top selection there. Um, if you have a VMware environment, this is very important, um, you do require to um, have a vCenter uh, license active in order to run it against that uh, for it to be fully supported. So um, if that's the case, you know, you have a vCenter, you point it at the vCenter there and you enter the, the IP address of that vCenter. And this also supports, um, you know, major flavors of Linux as well. Um, but back to vCenter, if you don't happen to have a vCenter, there are some ways around that where we can still get some performance uh, understandings of what's going on uh, without the vCenter, but it's just not as clean of a report. Um, and again, you can, you know, reach out to, uh, to us and we'll help you get that set up. But regardless, you know, depending on your, um, you know, the protocol you want to use or, or the hypervisor that you have on said server, you know, that's going to be which ones you select. And it's important too, because if you have multiple, right, you can even, you know, say you add one Windows host, you know, you put in the IP address, click connect, it's going to ask you for a user pass, uh, you know, get all that going, click connect, 
it'll add it here just like it did with this uh, this local server. You can go back in here and add another server as well. If you have a long list of servers that you want to be pointing at, um, you know, you can also create a, a document and it'll pull from all of the you know IPs that you have on that document. And again, we can give you a template for that to get that set up. Um, and then, like I said, the, the vCenter as well. Um, if you do point it at vCenter specifically, it will pull any single server that you have within that vCenter environment. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then once you have, you know, all the servers that you want, you know, listed here, then you get down to the bottom right and you select duration. Now we always recommend at very minimum 24 hours during normal to heavy, uh, you know, business hours. That way we're getting a, a true understanding of what your performance a workload entails, right? You know, we don't want to be running it against maybe, uh, you know, a, a weekend where nobody's in the office or a holiday, right? We want to make sure that we're getting you know, a true a representation of what your environment is is performing like on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, the longer the better because that, you know, is store, uh, it establishes a, a consistency and we can really see, you know, kind of what the, the different, um, uh, you know, workloads look like from day to day. Uh, but at very minimal, we recommend, you know, 24, uh, 24 hours. And you, again, you can see you can run it all the way up to seven days. So we're just going to do 24 hours. And then once I have all of that how I want it, then I do start capture. And there you have it. It started. So you can see here time remaining at the top right hand side. You know, it's counting down from 24 hours because that's the duration I set it at. Um, you can confirm that, you know, these are, you know, the, the host that you wanted to, to point it towards. So again, here in this instance, I've only pointed at a single host and then it's automatically, um, again, communicating with your live optics account that you have uh, within the portal. So, um, you know, if you were to log in right now to, you know, the live optics portal, you know, I'd be able to see, you know, this running as well. And I'd, you know, be able to see, Hey, it is running. Um, now important thing to note is that this, uh, window does need to be, need to remain open during the duration that it's ran. So um, it needs to not only be open, but it needs to remain on that subnet. So um, you can minimize it, but it does have to remain at least, you know, open and, and running until the live optics completes. Thanks for watching. Hopefully by now you have live optics up and running. To learn how to interpret the report, be sure to check out our next video in the live optics series. To stay connected with our content, please don't forget to like and subscribe.